This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Businessman reportedly shoots a son during dispute in Clarendon. A dispute said to have been over the use of a motor car on Saturday in his Clarendon resulted in a man being shot, reportedly by his father, who is a businessman. The wounded man, said to be in his 20s, was assisted to the hospital where he was admitted for treatment. According to initial reports, some time after 10 a.m., the businessman, who is a licensed firearm holder, instructed his son to desist from using his motor vehicle. The son is said to have disobeyed the instruction, resulting in an argument between the two. The two family members then engaged in a tussle, during which the son was allegedly shot in the lower region of his body by his father. The injured man was rushed to the hospital. It is not clear whether the businessman is in police custody. Police investigations are ongoing into the development. Trial of man accused of killing Linval Bloomfield postponed, bail extended. The trial of the man accused of killing former Portland East Member of Parliament, Dr. Linval Bloomfield, was this morning postponed to April 20 next year in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston. The adjournment came after attorney at law Peter Champagny, who is representing Simeon Sutherland, indicated that he had a medical emergency and was unable to proceed today. Sutherland's bail was extended by Justice Leighton Pusey. Sutherland 20, who is from Buff Bay, Portland, is charged with murder and misprison of felony. Misprison of felony is a crime that occurs when someone knows a felony has been committed but fails to inform the authorities. Sutherland was arrested in 2019 by investigators from the Major Investigation Division after forensic evidence reportedly linked him to the scene of the crime. Bloomfield was found with multiple stab wounds by an employee at his home in the parish on the morning of February 2, 2019. Two knives that were recovered at the politician's house, along with a vest that was found in bushes near the premises, were said to be vital evidence in the case and were sent for forensic testing. Sutherland was initially detained on February 13 by MID investigators who have led the probe. During the initial questioning, it was revealed that he admitted to being with Bloomfield several hours prior to the politician's nude body being discovered with stab wounds, but Sutherland reportedly denied knowing anything about the killing. Seven-month-old baby shot by gunmen in Maxfield Avenue, urgent call for blood. A seven-month-old baby has been rushed to the hospital after she was shot and injured by gunmen in Sunlight Street, Kingston. Reports are that about 11.58 p.m. on Sunday, gunmen invaded a property in the mentioned community and opened fire at occupants of a house. Reports are that the criminals then left the area. A search was carried out at the premises and the child, Shavoni Thomas, was found suffering from gunshot wounds. The infant was rushed to the hospital, where she has since been admitted in critical condition. There are reports that family members have sent out an urgent call to members of the public as the child is in need of blood. St. James residents stage a major protest over poor road conditions. More than 100 disgruntled residents in the St. James communities of Johns Hall, Blackshop, St. John's, Dam Road, Herlock, Spring Mount, and other adjoining areas this morning took to the streets and staged a major protest over poor road conditions. They came out from as early as 6 o'clock and blocked all the major entrances and exits to the areas, including the main stretch of roadway, which leads from Montego Bay through to Tucker, Johns Hall, and Spring Mount, and into St. Elizabeth. Roadblocks were mounted at dozens of locations with the use of larger boulders, huge tree trunks, tires, and old furniture and appliances. Hundreds were left stranded as taxi operators withdrew their services. The protesters say they have been suffering for more than five years with the deplorable road conditions and the vow to continue their action until the situation is addressed by their political representatives. Members of the security forces have been deployed to the scene as workmen use heavy equipment to clear roads. Western Regional Health Officials Still Quiet on Body Found
The Western Regional Health Authority is yet to respond to a gruesome discovery in which the decomposing body of a man killed by the police was left outside an old morgue at Noah Holmes Hospital in Hanover for two days. The deceased man has been identified as 41-year-old Pedro Renardo Pierce of an Orange Bay address in the parish. Reports are that the man was fatally shot by the police at his house on June 27 after he reportedly attacked the law enforcers with a machete. The police had gone to the house to warn him over an incident in which he had reportedly broken the window of someone's car. The man was taken to the Noel Holmes Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Independent Commission of Investigations began its investigations and after viewing the body, it was bagged and taken to the hospital's old mark at the back of the premises, which has been out of use for more than 15 years. The smelly decomposing body was discovered by hospital staff two days later on June 29. When contacted, head of the Hanover Police Division, Superintendent Sharon B. Put said the police had no comment on the case, which is a hospital and an indicom matter. The Western Regional Health Authority said it was looking into the matter and a response would be sent. Daniel Anderson, Indicom's communications officer, said the commission is aware of the unfortunate situation. She said Indicom was told that the funeral home was informed of the incident on the 27th of June. Indicom is aware of the decomposing state of Mr. Predger Pierce's body, which was unsatisfactory. Ordinarily, a body would have been collected at the earliest opportunity once the funeral home has been informed. It is the understanding of the commission that the funeral home was informed on the day of the incident. A fuller appreciation is being sought by the commission in this matter, stated Anderson. However, a report prepared by Dr. Robert A. Dolly, CEO of Dolly's Funeral Service, has stated otherwise. The licensed embalmer and functional director, who is a medical doctor, said it was on the 29th that the funeral home received the call. Dr. Doyle said the body had remained in the same location for two days after the police and Indicom had processed it at the hospital. He said the body was in a state of decomposition when they were called by the police to pick it up. Similarly, Margaret Pierce, the sister of the deceased man, told the news last Tuesday, the day of the post-mortem, that the blunder is not the fault of the funeral home. It is not the parlor's fault. It is the 29th that Doyle has got the call to come and pick up the body when my brother's body had already been decomposed, stated Pierce. Hope fading as Honduran fishers feared dead. A multi-agency search was still underway late Sunday for the Falling Star fishing boat that sent sail for Honduras but disappeared in the vicinity of the Pedro Keys. Fifteen Honduran fishermen were said to be on board. Roger Lynn, Director of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at the Rainforest Seafoods, owners of the vessel, said the men were returning the boat for the lobster season. It went there as is the norm, where it goes after the season to do the necessary repairs to prepare for the new season, which starts the 1st of July. On the way back now, when it entered our waters, it disappeared, Lynn told the news. A massive search operation was launched after the company reported the incident to the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard and the Marine Police. The boat has been missing since Friday, law enforcement officials have revealed. Meanwhile, Sean Taylor, chairman of the Jamaica Fishermen Cooperative Union, believes the aggressive weather conditions in the deep beyond the Pedro Key would have made sailing difficult. The boat was reportedly laden with lobster traps. The Pedro Banks is located south of Jamaica and is administratively part of Kingston. Children's Home Chef Arrested After Disabled Ward Sexually Assaulted A suspect is now in police custody in connection with the sexual assault of a disabled ward of the state at a western Jamaica children's home. The assault reportedly occurred last month. The suspect, who is employed as a chef at the children's home, surrendered to the police on Saturday in the presence of his attorney, the police reported. He is to be interviewed by detectives. According to police sources, the teenage ward was in the yard at the children's home when a man called her for a mango. It is reported that she refused. The man then approached her and pulled her by the hand to the back of the premises where the sexual assault occurred. 
16-year-old girl gone missing in St. James. An Ananda alert has been activated for 16-year-old Tashina Thomas of Lilliput District in St. James, who has been missing since Wednesday, June 9. She is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 175 centimeters, or 5 feet 9 inches tall. Reports from the police are that Tashina was last seen at home at about 1 p.m., dressed in a brown blouse, blue jeans pants, and a pair of brown slippers. She has not been heard from since then. All efforts to contact her since then have been unsuccessful. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Tashina Thomas is being asked to contact the Baritone Police at 876-953-7899, the Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. 37 new COVID-19 cases, one more fatality. A 70-year-old corporate era man who died on Sunday is the latest COVID-19 fatality, increasing the tally to 1,131. Meanwhile, there were 37 new cases with ages ranging from 2 to 98 years, pushing the total to 50,757 with 9,237 being active. Of the new cases, 23 are women and 14 are men. West Moreland accounts for the majority of the new infections, with 11 cases being recorded, followed by Hanover with 7 and then St. James with 5. A total of 487 tests were conducted. The country's positivity rate stands at 7.6%. In the meantime, there were 1,029 more recoveries, increasing the total to 40,029. Some 92 persons are in hospital, with 27 being moderately ill and 10 critically ill. Three persons are in government quarantine, while 50,230 are at home. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.